previously on Salty Lass. Well, it's all go here on Salty Lass. Um, Beverly is currently trying to fix our impella, uh, whereas my task is uh, to keep Salty Lass going under sail. So, um, oops. She's uh, trying to get a little bit too close to wind. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what we've done at the moment is um, we have contacted uh, the Coast Guard to basically advise them of things like our length, um, our MMSI number, the number of people on board. This is what Bubbly's done and I'm afraid to say it's not working. So it's going to be my job to see if I can come up with something. Oh, well, Salty Lass is in chaos here at the moment, <sighs> but some subscribers want to uh, come aboard, so I best get too sweet and sort this out. We were welcomed to Baltimore by Lou and Kelly, who had sailed their boat over from Canada. It was a great relaxation session after all our adventures at sea. What's happening, Chief Engineer? Well, this morning um, we've moved Salty Lass from a mooring onto uh, the anchor just outside Baltimore. That way we can sort this all out and uh, get her fixed. Um, the repair that we I did at uh, sea is it looks exactly the same as the repair that Beverly did. But it's all the inside where there was a slight change. Um, but I've got to get it undone so that we can sort it out. Right, so the, um, the, bolt, the bolt on the side has sheared. Uh, yeah, we're going to see that in a minute. But basically the bolt on the side is sheared. It goes into a plate. Um, but like I say, we'll... It's scary to think that your entire engine survival depends on one small brass screw. Yeah. But it does. Mm. So, uh, and we'll show you everything in a bit. Okay, so what, what have we got here, Gainer? Okay, so uh, this part of the impeller, um, the intake, um, not too sure which way around it is, but the intake is uh, one of the pipes, and the exit is the other pipe, and then there's this brass uh plate that goes between the two uh pipes and uh, there's just a tiny little hole here and this is where the nut is sheared so basically this nut goes from the outside through the impeller housing and into here and into this and it is just basically sheared off right well what we did was we used the drill and uh, what the drill has actually done is uh, spun the uh, nut through. So it now means that we have a hole and more importantly, we have the threads in place. We have not damaged the threads. And the other half of the uh, nut is just there in front of you. Yeah. Well, basically, yes. The other half is there, but <laughs> that's useless to me. Well... You have to love uh, the yachting community. Uh, one of the reasons that Beverly and I um, create posts is so that we can extend our reach into the yachting community. So Beverly put up a post last night um, talking about the screw um, and um, she's just gone off now because uh, one of our subscribers uh, thinks that they have the particular screw we need on board so if they do that is going to be absolutely fantastic um, but as always this is salty lass we have a backup plan and our backup plan is to go to a place called Skibbereen which has at least got a Chandler's so we're hoping that they might have them but we are hoping that the um, uh, subscriber has one. We like, um, you know, being in touch with subscribers and chatting to them and stuff. 
so anyway that's what she's doing uh, I'm here on Salty Lass on my own so haha <laughs> I've got a little project in mind uh, that I can easily do in the few minutes that she's away is a, um, a, a dinghy line and we use this for a variety of things we use it to keep the dinghy on but we also use it as a safety line so that we attach this around the uh, engine so that one person is actually lifting the engine while the other person puts it into position but um, it's just a little bit too short for that job so <laughs> I'm going to get it replaced. I found, um, I've got an old piece of uh, line. It's one of our dog ropes. Dog ropes uh, are basically ropes that just don't have a job. So uh, it's more than adequately long enough. So I've just got to put a halyard knot on and uh, my job's done. <laughs> so that's my new halyard knot uh, on and um, trust me this line is a lot longer than the line I've just removed so uh This crippled our boat, or to be more honest, that crippled our boat. And you can see the difference. This one had sheared just literally a couple of millimetres that was inside this plate that holds this plate in place. Um, where did we get this one, you might ask? Well, all I can say is thank you to Dave and Adrian on Little Egret. Um, their help was invaluable. He helped tap this out to match an M4 thread. He reckons it was an M4 thread, but it just got damaged when this sheared. Maybe it got damaged when we removed the bit that was still stuck in there. But he tapped it out, and I happened to have a brass M4, which was too long. So I've spent the day with my little set of miniature files, filing this down, and this pathetically tiny bolt will get the boat moving again. Isn't it absolute rubbish? Nine millimetres of brass bolt is enough to cripple us. Terrifying, isn't it? So, uh, Beverly, while you were on um, the other boat, mm -hmm. um, he showed us, how, showed you um, how to tap the how plate. To, how to tap if you don't have a tap set. Yes, that's right. That is it point... 8.5 millimetres in leg, so we, we need we need a couple of brass M4 bolts, probably about 10 mil in length, and then we can just we can just shave a millimetre and a half off them, and then we will have an endless supply of these just in case. Uh, what he did was he took a standard M4 bolt, and he took a great big file, much bigger than this little mini one, and he basically cut the end off the file. And the reason for that was he reckons this thread was an M4 thread, but you can use this as a tap because this little groove gives space for the, the chafe as, you, as this shaves it off, gives room for it to get pushed out rather than block the threads behind it up. And so basically it can just re-tap an existing thread if they're not too badly damaged. That's what he did and it worked beautifully. So I have this and I have another steel bolt which um, is untouched. Uh, here it is, just here. And in the short term these are our spares. The reason I'm using the brass one is A, galvanic reasons and B, it's a heck of a lot easier to file brass than it is to file steel. So um, 
this I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on. I will also Jura lac it where it meets the housing and we'll put some Jura lac in behind the housing and uh, then we will put glycerine in and install the impeller and with a bit of luck, all fingers crossed, the boat will be operative again and it will be yippee doo da time for us. There we go. Let's just uh, get it balanced or whatever it is. Ah, that's why it's not going in. I've not got it in the right position. Well, I just uh, had a wee look at the uh, impeller before I installed it and I'm so glad I did uh, because uh, our pet impeller is um, also gone. I suspect it's been damaged by all the shenanigans that's gone on. But um, so I'm putting in, I've put in an, uh, one of our used impellers. It's one of the reasons that you should always um, keep good quality impellers on board so that um, for exactly this reason the one that we had is is toast we do have a brand new one as well don't we uh, no we only have the used ones it's one of the things i've got to buy because we couldn't get them before we set off we couldn't get them before we set off so um we but we have two used good quality impellers and i'm glad we do because uh one of them's going in here ready starting <laughs> Beverly, how did our um, testing go? Uh, after a bit of a false start, it went absolutely fine. There's loads of splashes coming out the back and we are very, very pleased. Um, there's no water shooting off into the build. Everything seems to be as it should be. <sighs> it's always nerve wracking starting a, an engine dry whenever you've got all the water out of the system, but it came through and we're happy enough. Um, we know that you can run the engine for a few minutes on a, on a dry impeller, on a dry system. It's not good, we don't want to do it, um, but it's nothing to get too panicky about. But it's just so nice to see the water coming out the back and not coming out the front. <sighs> well, I think we've earned our cup of tea. But just reflecting on all this, um, we were lucky. If I hadn't noticed the change of engine tone and the lack of splashes, we might not have noticed that. That could have carried on pumping out water until the impeller burned itself dry. Maybe the impeller did, maybe that's where it got damaged. I don't know. Maybe it was us taking it in and out three, four times. Um, but if that had carried on, the engine could have massively overheated, uh, could have distorted the block, it could have uh, made things melt. It certainly could have seized the engine completely. And in the area we were sailing between the stags and things like that, which was the area we wanted the engine because we had to tack and the tack would have taken us under the rocks. So we were using the engine to lengthen one of our tacks so we didn't have to do that. But can you imagine if the engine had ceased at that point? Um, I find it absolutely absurd that a 9mm brass bolt can totally seize your engine. And possibly if it happens in just the wrong place at the wrong time, result in your boat being wrecked. Um, you could be on the rocks, you could not be able to avoid a collision. All sorts of things could happen. It's crazy. Our boat depends on a tiny, tiny little bolt that until yesterday we didn't even know existed. Whatever else boating is, it's not boring. <laughs>